News every 15 minutes, weather every 10, and sports twice an hour. News Talk KGVO, AM 1290 and now 101.5 FM. You're listening to Montana Morning with Peter Christian. Washington State fugitive apprehended after an officer-involved shooting. Good morning, everyone. It's Montana Morning. It's Friday, November the 6th, 2015. Had a little bit of snow overnight, uh, anywhere from a quarter inch at the airport up to uh, two inches in the South Hills area. However, the roads are in pretty good shape, mostly just bare and wet at this time. Right now we have a cloudy sky and 31 degrees. Our newscast sponsored by Transport Equipment, your headquarters for RV service maintenance and repair. Located just south of the Y, call 541-9097. This morning's top story, an officer-involved shooting occurred at a local motel yesterday. 25-year-old Olehide Fletcher was wanted in connection with a drive-by shooting that occurred earlier this week near Moses Lake, Washington. He was discovered by Deputy U.S. Marshals at about 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon at the City Lodge Motel on West Broadway. Spokesman Travis Welsh said when Fletcher realized his vehicle was surrounded, he attempted to escape. He accelerated rapidly forward towards an unmarked vehicle that was occupied by several U.S. Marshals. At that point, a Missoula police officer viewed a threat and he did in fact fire three rounds from a duty weapon into the suspect vehicle. Welsh described what happened next. The vehicle then crashed into the deputy marshal's vehicle. At that point, the suspect and his passenger were taken into custody. The uh, suspect had glass fragments in his eye. Uh, he was treated at the scene, but otherwise there were no injuries. Well, well said, since it was a Missoula police officer involved shooting, the investigation will be conducted by the Montana Department of Criminal Investigations in Helena. The FBI is joining in the search for a 79-year-old Montana woman and her son, who were last seen October 28, just over a week after a cleaning lady found a large bar of gold at the home of the woman's deceased ex-husband. Powell County Sheriff Scott Howard says Beverly Giannotti was reported missing October 31st by a friend. Officers found unattended dogs at her house in Deer Lodge and another dog at the home of her son, 57-year-old Gregory Giannotti. There was no sign of a struggle in either house or at the house that belonged to Bill Giannotti, who died in August. Officials say Beverly was having some work done at Bill's house when a cleaning lady told her about the gold on October 19th. The gold is also missing. Enrollment at the University of Montana for the fall semester was lower than originally reported. Vice President for Integrated Communications Peggy Coor has the numbers. Our uh, fall census, which is the enrollment report, shows that for students, and I'm talking headcount here, we have 13,044 students counted for fall 2015, and that is 6.5% lower than fall a year ago. Since state funding is tied to enrollment, CORE said the school's budget will also take a hit. So overall for this current fiscal year, you would look at uh, uh, about $5 million in in reallocations and really in trying to make savings of, of what the planned expenses were. Coors says despite the reduced numbers, the school still came within 1% of its original fall enrollment forecast. She cited a decreasing number of high school graduates and fewer out-of-state students coming to the school as some of the reasons for the drop in enrollment. Public school advocates are arguing that a state agency rightly determined the Montana Constitution prohibits private religious schools from a new scholarship tax credit program. However, private school supporters say the Department of Revenue overstepped by excluding religious schools and proposed rules for the program that begins January 1st. The department held a public hearing yesterday on the proposed rules that will allow tax credits for donations of up to $150 to scholarships to private schools. Nine people, including legislators and representatives of religious organizations and schools, spoke against the proposed rules. They say the legislature intended the tax credit to benefit all students. Five people, most representing teachers' unions and public school associations, support the rules. They said the law states it must be administered in accordance with constitutional provisions that prohibit direct or indirect appropriations to sectarian schools. This week, Montana's Office of Public Instruction Superintendent Denise Juno told the Associated Press she'd be challenging sitting U.S. Congressman Ryan Zinke for his seat. Juno said her campaign would focus on four main issues, quote, preparing the next generation for the global economy, access to public lands, protecting privacy, and promoting transparency in election campaigns. In response, Zinke, who was on talkback yesterday, uh, explained his campaign's focus. Well, I think we should focus on three things. 
uh, support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And the Constitution should be more than words. It represents our nation's values and individual rights. Secondly, I think we need to, we need to promote a free and prosperous economy. Because unless we have an economy that, that is growing and prosperous, then you can't afford a strong military. You can't afford a, you know, to keep the promises we've made. And we've made a lot of promises to the country. And, and lastly, I think we need strong defense. And defense is both national defense and military, but also, also security of our southern borders. If we would focus on those core three things, I, I think Congress and our country would be stronger. Since 1889, Republicans have dominated the congressional seat, losing only to five Democrats. The last time a Democrat was in that position was Pat Williams back in 1997. Families, attorneys, and counselors urged the legislative committee to dig deeper into the activities of the Montana Division of Child and Family Services after an audit uncovered issues with inadequate documentation, inconsistent investigations, and an antiquated computer system. Child and Family Services Administrator Sarah Corbally said the agency agrees with most of the recommended improvements improvements, but lacks the staff to handle its increased caseload. This week, the Montana Supreme Court heard arguments over a case that will directly impact the state of Montana medical marijuana industry. Attorney James Getz is representing the industry in court and says many of the abuses that have occurred when Montana first legalized medical marijuana have been addressed. The uh, so-called traveling caravans have been curbed. The doctors uh, uh, certifying the uh, medical board has clamped down on those. The system is actually working quite well. The numbers of cardholders went down from over 30,000 to around 7,000. I think the uh, perceived abuses have been addressed. Getz says his focus in the Montana Supreme Court hearings is to end some of the odd features of a 2011 law that the state legislature passed to address abuses. Uh, providers can only have three cardholders to service, and uh, they can't charge. And if you had a pharmacist, for example, prescribing a painkiller, <laughs> you know, if you were limited, if you couldn't charge, and then you're limited to three people, it would make no sense. It would be the death of the pharmaceutical industry. Getz says that forces outside of Montana will likely impact the final decision. News Talk Time Now, 612. News Talk, KGVO. Missoula's official weather station. Low clouds and freezing fog possible this morning, then becoming partly sunny by the afternoon. Temperatures stay cool today as our highs are stuck in the upper 30s. Tonight, mostly cloudy, lows in the mid-20s. I'm meteorologist Brooke Foster for Missoula's KECI 13.